You're thinking V6 full-size half-ton pickup truck. Well, if you want to go someplace like what you're seeing right here to Badlands National Park and you want to go there with a decent-sized travel trailer and boondock at the wall, let me tell you why that might not be the right choice truck. I'm going to talk about these hot V6 twin turbo engines plus or minus hybrid that people are talking about in both the Ford F-150 and the Toyota Tundra in terms of their reliability, their capability, and of course fuel economy. A lot of people are going to call me a hater in this video, and that's not accurate at all. I don't hate this truck. I don't like it for me. It may suit you just fine. I don't like the F-150. It may suit you just fine. Go ahead and comment. Tell me where you think I'm right, where you think I'm wrong. I love to read those things. Here's another place that I wouldn't take a V6 twin turbo. Iron Creek Lake in the Northern Black Hills. Whether it's the Ford EcoBoost or the new Toyota Tundra V6 IMAX, I wouldn't take either one of them to this location. Let's talk about the Ford first. One of the commonly repeated mantras that we hear with the Ford is that the 3.5 is actually more reliable than the 5.0 statistically. Now that may be true, but the question you have to ask yourself is how many people who are buying the 3.5 plan I'm on towing that a much it. higher percentage of 5.0 purchasers plan on towing or hauling with that vehicle regularly? Now let's talk about that commonly repeated mantra for the iForce and the iForce Max engines. It's a proven engine. It's been used all the way back to the good old age of 2018 in the Lexus LS500 and they sell at least 30 of those a year. So it's a, clearly a proven engine. Well, let's challenge some of that. And I'm not even gonna get into the wastegate actuator issue because that's going to play itself out over time. There are too many issues happening with that currently and I don't understand that mantra either. Why are people saying, well, it's really just a supplier issue with a few? Supply issue the supplier's name isn't on the product Toyota's name is on the product and Toyota purchased them from the supplier and it's Toyota's job to make sure that they're selling a quality product and one more side note here I'm tired of hearing people say that lifting the cab off the vehicle to fix a problem is no big deal it's a huge deal when it's a new vehicle that's a lot of hours of labor it's not as simple as people have reported it to be it's not six bolts and you lift it off it's a crazy amount of labor and Toyota only offers a three-year 36,000 mile warranty on this vehicle if they really believe it go ahead and offer a hundred seven year 150,000 mile warranty on the powertrain and show us Toyota that you believe this is the same quality product that you've always produced Let's move on to that proven engine in the Lexus LS 500 dating all the way back to 2018. In Consumer Reports, the only year they've actually been able to get an owner satisfaction rating on it so far, because it is so new, is the 2018 year where it gets a disappointing one out of five, an unbelievable number for any Toyota product. Also, if you look at the data on Fuely and the data on Consumer Reports, this vehicle is averaging about 20 miles per gallon. That's per fill up. That's horrible. This vehicle is rated at 22 to 29 with that six with that six cylinder V6 3.5 really 3.4 turbo engine in it and it's really only getting 20 to 21 which also happens to be the same number that the Lexus LS 460 got with the 4.6 liter engine in it about 20 miles per gallon. So far all this engine has proven to me is that it's a disappointment to its owners and that it doesn't get the fuel economy it's rated for. Now when you look at the data on Fuley for the second generation Tundra with the 5.7 liter, it's been right between about 14 and 15 MPGs on average over the lifetime of its existence. Now the V6 twin turbo should certainly do better when unloaded than the V8 does, especially given the gearing. But will it really do better than the Ford F-150? I doubt it. The Ford F-150 has basically the same engine and the same gearing in a vehicle that's nearly a thousand pounds lighter. One of the things Ford learned very quickly when they introduced the EcoBoost engine was that it didn't work well in a heavy full-size pickup truck. So in 2015, they redesigned it and made it about a thousand pounds lighter than it was previously. Now, of course, in 2021, Ford introduced the PowerBoost engine, which cranked out a whopping 430 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque, setting the standard in the half-ton class. Now what's interesting is that PowerBoost F-150 is rated at 24 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway. But as we can see here with based on the fuel ups, it's only getting about 18.9 on average based on the data that's coming in on Fuely. What's interesting here is that the new Godzilla engine, the 7.3 liter V8 introduced in 2020 by Ford for its heavy duty trucks, the F-250 and the F-350, gets 430 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. It's the same horsepower, substantially less torque than the power boost engine gets. This begs the question, why not drop the power boost into the heavy duty trucks? Well, that's a pretty obvious answer because nobody's fooled into thinking that that paltry little engine isn't going to fail if it's asked to do heavy duty work, even though it technically does get better power. 
I love that my second gen Toyota Tundra is a heavy fat pig of a half ton that makes it stable on the road when I'm towing my 7,000 pound travel trailer across the country. And I also love that it's got this proven engine and this great transmission that is stable and going to allow me to do that effectively. The problem with the new truck is that it may tow very well, 40, 50, maybe 100 miles. But how's it going to do for longevity? The same things that apply to that 7.3 liter in a Ford HD truck versus the power boost in the half ton also apply to my second generation Tundra. The problem is the new generation Tundra is just as heavy as mine. So the 5.7 liter is going to be a far better choice for this truck for longevity if you plan to use it to tow and haul. This is where, in my opinion, Toyota missed the boat with their new lifestyle truck. Essentially, they have a truck that's a one-trick pony. If you want to tow the little uh, teardrop trailer that you see here, the 2022 should be fine for that. But there were over 600,000 new RV sales in 2021, and they're expected to be an even greater number in 2022. Now, you could say, hey, if you're traveling like I am, you should have an HD truck, maybe even a diesel. But the truth of the matter is, is my Tundra does this very effectively and safely, and I'm well within its range of capability. The problem is, with the new truck, you're going to say, well, it's the same thing, except I'm going to wear those turbos out. Now this is where you have to give General Motors just a little bit of credit in their vehicle because even though it does really need premium fuel which makes it effectively more uh, cost inefficient, it also does get better miles per gallon likely with a 6.2 liter than the Tundra will get with its new 3.4 liter. But the real credit here deserves to go to Ram that went to an 8-speed transmission back in 2013. And when they did that and they went to that 8-speed, although the gearing took it down to 3.21, they built a fuel-efficient half-ton truck, as fuel-efficient as it can be anyway. Now, if that's what you're looking for, that's the right way to go, and that's what the Tundra is building currently. And so if that floats your boat, go ahead and get that. Here's where the likes of Ford, General Motors, and especially Ram have it all over Toyota. They have different offerings, and I'm not just talking about HD trucks. In their half-ton market, they all still offer V8s. Not only that, as some of their V8s go away, for example, when Ram goes to the Tornado i6, Inline sixes have always been known as great torque and great dependability when it comes to being a tow motor, and I would trust it out here where you see me all secluded in Valley of the Gods. How much do you think it would cost to get a wrecker out here when my wastegate actuator goes out on my twin turbo and it goes into limp mode out in this setting in Valley of the Gods? I don't ever have to, want to have to find that. Bill so as out. I long for returning to the beautiful sunrises and sunsets over the Badlands camped at the wall, I just want to say if you're looking for a truck, make sure it's got the capability you're looking for and then some and make sure it's going to do it for a long time watching reviewers who take their new truck 40 or 50 miles towing and tell you how great it did and how it beat the other one just doesn't hold up to doing it tens of thousands of miles a year like I do.